Stick with me and I'll teach you how to make this cool smoking witch's knot that'll keep evil spirits and bad things away. Check it out. Welcome! So today I'm going to be working on carving what's called a, a witch's knot. Looks like this. It's actually uh, also sometimes called a magic knot. And it's an old symbol. It's a, one of the oldest protective symbols, a protective ward you would put over your doorway or house. It goes back uh, to the Middle Ages. Uh, people credit it to the Norse and the Celts. But basically, there's some controversy about what it does. It either keeps witchcraft from working, or it is a protective that keeps negative forces out. Either way, it's protective. I'm going to give it a try today, and we'll see what happens. So, with this, uh, as I always try to like to do, I'd like to try to freehand. So we're going to try to draw this in, in one go. I don't know if I can do this, but... We will see what happens. So I'm going to get the circle first. Um, let's go back around here. And then, let's see. How am I going to do this? Probably go up this way. Come back down. Go this way come back down come on come on go this way it's hard to draw on wood sometimes and then one more cross out and have it go this way Okay, so that's it. Um, as I carve it, I'll shape it more pointy. But I kind of got the idea of what it's going to look like. I want it to look handmade. Obviously, you know, um, I don't want it to look like someone just put it into a CNC machine and just hit cut. So I'm going to carve this puppy in a little deep. We'll go around the edges first, and I'll reshape it so it's a little prettier and more even. But again, when I want it to look rustic like um, somebody in the Middle Ages carved this thing into a piece of wood. So there we go. Let's give it a try. Next thing I'm going to do is put the candle oil in it. Okay, so... Big enough for the candle, that seems to work good. A uh, little off center, but hey, you know it's handmade. So what I did is, you know, I, I drew it all in one continuous motion like you're supposed to, but now I'm going to come back and roughed out a little more uh, pointy shape. But what I'm also going to mark is, I think I'm going to make this a little fancier and make it weave back and forth. So I'm going to try to copy this image so to remind me um, so let's see it goes under here and this is darker it goes above here okay so under above and then I just repeat that pattern over and over and I'll worry about the middle when I get to it. We'll see what I do. Okay, so let's try that. So, oh, by the way, this is white pine. I will be using, to start out, I will be using the 1 8 Cuts All Extreme uh, Dovetail. I like this because it, it gives a nice sharp cut when I go around. So, I'll go outside the lines and uh, I'll just start by roughing this out. I'm going to be using a Black & Decker RXT which is and with a Dremel shaft. So the, my flex shaft is a Dremel. Uh, Jordy Johnson turned me on to this. By the way, if you haven't checked out his channel, go check out his channel. It's awesome. If you're a beginner woodcarver, he has like 
a, a whole lot of videos to, and he is the guy that got me started carving. So I'm still pretty much a noob, but I'm trying to find my own direction here and doing stuff that interests me and some protection wards I think is pretty cool. I think a lot of people would like to uh, have their house protected from from whatever they're trying to protect it from. I don't know. Whatever your flavor of belief is. Okay. So let's get started. Okay, so I got this part roughed out. Now what I have to do is figure out how to go under and over with all these cuts and I'm gonna shave this down a little more and open some space up just create some negative space and then uh, I'll get into doing the detail work So what I've done is cut away a bunch of the excess so it'll make it more 3D. I switched over to my Roto Zip. This is a tile cutting tool to do the fine point work. So I'll go in here and I'm going to start making these loops. And then I'm going to stop to figure out how to do all this interweaving. I'm not exactly sure how to do this yet. So we're going to figure it out together because that'll be fun. All right, here we go. Anyway, you s you probably see where I'm going with this. I'm going to cut the camera off a little more while I do all this, and I'll come back later after I cut these holes out. Okay, so I still got a lot of digging to do and shaping before I dive into the details. I'm changing over to an extreme taper burr. This is a cut saw, 1 8. And I'm going to dig the detailing out and shape these. Here we go. So now comes the fun time. We got to figure out how to tuck, whoops, tuck these under and pop them up. And I got to do the ring. So I'm going to have to go back to the roto bit for this and we'll figure it out. One thing I'm figuring out is that in this center knot, you want to go in a pattern that is easy to remember. So if you take the, the loop, the lateral edge of the upper loop, the right edge, it goes over everything. So if you start there and you just do one loop at a time, it's easier to keep track of what you're doing. So I go over then I turn it find that lateral loop go over then I turn it over then I turn it over and that'll keep you from getting lost in the design and then what we'll do is we'll go back through and I'll go under 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 and eventually you'll start seeing a knot appear I hope this is the first time I've ever done this so this is a huge experimental prototype prototype
So I've been at it for about 45 minutes trying to dig this out and make it the right pattern. This is a lot more complex than I expected. Um, I left it bulky so I could keep carving in and I'm glad I did. It left me some room to dig. I'm going to have to switch tips and probably get down to the very narrows, but it's, it's tough to uh, get all these so they go over and under and over and under and over and under. Everything is over and under. Remember, take a pattern, take the outside loop, go over, 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 and then the next ones, you know, go under, under, under. When you get to the middle, I suggest, I'm starting to figure out that you do the over, under, over, under pattern as you go. Um, but here's the big mess, because these all have to join up in the middle. Uh, the ones that go under come above again and terminate. Uh, they, they flow into another one. So I'm going to have to clean this up with a better tip. We'll see what happens here. Again, I've never done this, so, nah, you know. All right, so I'm on about, gosh, three hours, three and a half probably, almost four hours of work. I, this is way more complicated than I expected and complex. I just can't get the middle right. I've dug it out and fixed it and took it lower and dug it out and fixed it. and I'm getting closer, but I am beat and I am taking, sometimes you just got to say mate and stop. So I'm going to stop this. Maybe in another day I come back and clean it up, try to figure out what I did wrong. Um, Followed the pattern. Everything's matching. It just doesn't look like the drawing. And maybe I just need to make it clear. I don't know. So I have to figure all that out. Anyway, it's still kind of cool looking. Once I stain it and stuff, it, it'll be cool. I just uh, was hoping to do better. We'll figure it out. So I think I'm probably going to throw on the towel because since I freehanded it, there's not enough room that you can see any of the details of the knots crossing, really. Uh, I hate to say it, probably going to just have to use a stencil, put it on, and recarve it. And I'm probably going to make it so it can flow through some smoke. I will... Uh, update you when I do that. So this is my second try at this. You can see the knots interweaving in and out much better this time. Although some of the places got a little thin. Uh, they're actually pretty deep when you go down. It's just very hard to get in such a small candle. It's hard to get in there with the burrs the way you want. But I had to use a pattern and then I burned around the edges. And you can see I actually cut the edges through here so you can see little holes under the rope knots here and you'll see what that's for see I drilled a hole up top here if I were to redesign this I would have moved this lower uh, the next one I do I'll probably move it lower so it doesn't have to be such a massive hole to do this and then what I did is I put two washers in here I put a tiny washer uh, one quarter inch and then a larger one and what this does is it gives you kind of double protection because I wanted this puppy to smoke. So there's different ways to activate this. Obviously, you could uh, light a candle in it. So it does take a candle. So there's a candle. Or you can light an incense. These are called backflow incense. They're special incense. And you'll notice there's a hole drilled out in the bottom. They won't work with a regular inset. You have to have a backflow or you got to drill a hole in it to make it do what I'm about to show you. You can do an incense to activate it. And also these glow. So I'll show you a picture here of it glowing. You can set it out in the sun or I use a UV flashlight to get it to glow like this quickly. And this is another way to activate it is to light this. So I'm going to light this and come back. And lastly, oh, before I light it, I guess one last way to activate it, if you're out of everything, you can always trace it. And I believe you trace it in one motion. So you'd start on the edge here, and I believe you go around like this, like this, like this, and then you come back to where you started and go around in a circle. And that was one motion, and you were able to draw it all out. So there you go. Any of those ways should activate it. 
So when you first light these backflow incense, you'll notice that the first eighth of it or so when it's burning, it just smokes upward. It won't flow downward. And that's pretty normal, so don't freak out and think like, your thing's not working. But eventually you'll start seeing some smoke come through here in a minute, and I'll bring you back for that. Alright, so you can now see the backflow starting to go. And you'll see it comes around the undercut, the backside there, and then spills out through the holes I drilled the areas I cut out now I can run to the center and spill down the whole knot and then it collects in the bottom there so you get a much better idea of why I cut it the way it did is so it can do this cool thing it's like watching a little smoke waterfall go see if you can blow it around it's kinda neat these incense don't last a terribly long time maybe about 15 minutes so it's long enough. They're pretty neat though. So there you go. Smoking witch is not. One last thing I forgot to say is you can see the smoke on the bottom collecting here. And when I sell these things, I usually sell them with a wood bowl. Uh, because this stuff does leave a little bit of a sticky residue if it's just pouring right out on the table. It comes up really easy enough, but just thought you'd want to know that it's kind of like, well, I guess any sort of smoke leaves some sort of residue, but it's good to just put it in a bowl. It's easy to wipe out. It's not that big of a deal, but also it looks cool, and that's cool with a K. Cool. All right, well, I hope you check out my other wood carving videos and any other videos of my old stuff you might wander into. So enjoy those. Until next time. Keep carving there.